Hello and welcome to Sports of Days this evening. Uh, I'm Emmanuel Fashemi and all update this evening we have a lot of juicy stories a lot of sports update that is going to tweak your fancy but before then i also have isaac omidiji from Nigeria state that will be joining me on the show but let's quickly go to the first story when nigeria secure second victory against kenya at the kwibuka t20 all right there in Rwanda, the Nigerian ladies are actually doing us proud. About 18 players were invited to camp in Bini, and it was streamlined to 14. And the 14 players, they've won three games against Rwanda, the host Kenya, uh, and the other uh, counterpart, Ghana, also in, 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 in that tournament. Now they've won about uh, two games on the bounce. Uh, yes, they beating the host and then beating Kenya also. I think this lady don't want to rest on their hours. When it comes to cricket in Nigeria, I think we are now holding our ground in Africa and very soon in the next two, three years from now, we will be on, uh, we will be a hero when it comes to cricket in the world. Isaac, welcome to the show. Nigerian ladies doing well in Rwanda. Thank you very much, Mario. You know, I was smiling when you said probably in the next two years, we will be a great country for cricket. Uh, I, I, I was smiling because if you look at the level of cricket development around the world, you know that we are still at very, very low level. However, the level we have is even better than where we used to be. So for the ladies to have done this in, uh, against Rwanda and against Kenya, these are two sides. Actually, Kenya have been a, a side that has been a bit difficult for us to beat. And the Kenya started uh, that particular game on a very strong note. You know, but thank God that at the end of the game, the ladies got the three wickets victory. And it is a good one. And let's hope that we can build this kind of momentum. And I'm very happy that Trust TV is giving this kind of game publicity it needs. Because if we also don't give this publicity and to know that we have people who play this game and how they are faring and the kind of uh, results they are, get, they are getting, sponsorship might be difficult for them to get. Because, you know, some of these federations are, there, are just there. They need sponsorship for them to, you know, explore more opportunities and expose more of this athlete. So I'm happy with their uh, participants, I mean, participation in this particular tournament. And I'm happy that they've gotten two good wins on the bounce. And it's a good one for them. It's a moral booster. Let's see how far they can go and improve on their rating and ranking on the continent of Africa. Our ranking on the continent of Africa, talking about the rankings, I think we've moved up the ladder, ladder a bit. And for the women, they were actually uh, fantastic. They, they had about one week uh, to one month uh, training camp in Benin. And if you look at it, I think uh, both the, the junior cricketers and the senior yellow and green, as they are called both for the junior and the senior, they bear the same name. Now for the ladies, this is the fourth edition of this tournament that they will be participating in. This is the fourth time. And now for the subsequent three editions, I think uh, we, we, we came close. But this time around, do you see us have, uh, the, uh, that chances? Do you see us uh, having the chances to actually win this uh, invitational tournament? Let us not forget that we won the Lagos, the Nigerian uh, invitational tournament right there in Lagos before this tournament. So do we have the chances of winning this tournament, the Kibuka tournament in Rwanda? Why not? Why not? You know, basking on the euphoria of the Lagos Invitational Tournament and going for this tournament, Invitational Tournament in Rwanda, between the host Rwanda, between another strong uh, team in Kenya. So what is stopping them? They can go as far as getting the title, two. And also, you know, this kind of games also add to the exposure you need to have a better ranking. And it contributes to their ratings as well. So, it's something that we must continue to talk about, that we have just, not just men, but women who are playing cricket in Nigeria. Not just men and women that are playing cricket. Now let's talk about the Nigeria Cricket Federation. On the scale of 10, where do you place them? Because this federation has been doing fantastic well when it comes to harnessing talent, getting talent, as in turning out tournaments upon tournaments. I think the only federation that stands close that even, um, let, let me say, that is far above them is the Nigerian Volleyball Federation. But for the Cricket Federation, on the scale of 10, where do you place them? I'll place them on 6, and 6 over 10 is not a poor result. That's at all. above average. Yeah. And the remaining 4 will be completed when we get more sponsors, we put in more publicity, we put in more branding into the game, 
and let's see how that will go. And then when, I'm very sure when they do that, a lot of uh, investment will come into that particular game. You know, we should also stop focusing only on football in Nigeria and basketball. As journalists, as sports reporters, yeah. and as a media house that trust us, even set a pace for now, we should talk more about other sports and other exploits. People are making exploits in Nigeria. All right, we should just talk about uh, these sports, not just football and basketball alone. And congratulations to our uh, girls out there in Rwanda for actually uh, winning these two games. A very, very tough one, but they, they came out tops and we are looking forward if they can actually win the tournament. Because before now, the Rwandese say they want to host and win. They have never won it. <laughs> Those, they are the host. They've never won the tournament. But this time around, they've said they want to host and win. I think Nigerian ladies are also pushing. And if we get our third win, that will give us the chance of winning the Kibuka T20 tournament right there in Rwanda. Let's move away from Rwanda, still stay on the continent of Africa, but this time around football, where Alali is now fast becoming the Real Madrid of Africa when it comes to the CAF Champions League. They defeated Wadad Casablanca right there at their stadium in Morocco to actually win and clinch the 11th title of the CAF Champions League, where only Enyuba has won it twice for Nigeria. Now, Alale, 11th CAF Champions League title, Isaac. And they will win more. <laughs> more and more and more. Because they have invested, they have planned, and they are working towards winning more. And you see, you, you see the last, the, the two clubs that played the final, Dad as well as Alale. You will not be angry to say that these are not two good sites on the continent of Africa. The North Africans know how to play this game. They know the business behind this game. They know what it takes. You know, we know that they have rough antics also in the game. But forget the antics. These guys are doing well. They have this infrastructure. They pay very well. They attract a lot of sponsors. They don't just bring in any kind of coach. They bring in players from even outside the continent of Africa. Most of the players are players playing for their national teams. Yes, of course. And many of our players play for the national team in Eyimba, Rivers United, and the rest. So we, these are club sides that have made statements on the continent, and they will continue to make statements. Remember at a point, or virtually the first 11 of the Egyptian national team are from Mahali. Yes, that of course. Play, and During the fine. time of uh, Abu Trika and the rest of them. Yes. So these are players that have set this record. These are players that will continue to set this record. And Alali, I remember the last time Ayimba did it. You know, Alali have also made a statement even before then. And they have made more statements even after then. And they will still continue to make statements because they are invested. So I'm not surprised that Alali and Widat played the final. I'm not surprised that Alali won it. Any one of them would have won it. Widat took the lead yesterday. And unfortunately, uh, they were kept back by Al Al Alali. And, you know, we still also want, I still want Cap to review this. Uh, oh man, away legs. Champions League final. final. Let us have a particular single leg final. So now let's start announcing that, okay, this particular country, this particular stadium, what was the final? Has it been done in Europe? And this oh man, away stuff should end. This home and away st uh, stuff should end. Motipe, I think you are hearing that from Isaac. And also, I'm supporting that. Let's have just one final leg. And I think maybe by next year, they have actually proposed that we'll be having one uh, CAF Champions League final, just one leg. They will take it to any uh, country of African continent where the final will take place. And we can have that. I think we're going to love it. And for Eniba, Rivers United, Remo Stars that will be presenting us on the continent, we won the Continental Trophy to land in Nigeria. Congratulations to Alali for winning their 11th title after beating uh, Wadat Casablanca 3-2 on aggregate to actually lift that trophy. Congratulations to them. We look forward to many of our Nigerian clubs actually winning that Convented Trophy outside Eniba. Let's move away from uh, the African continent now and head straight to Argentina, where Uruguay actually made sure that they retain the other 20 World Cup trophy in America, in that region, by beating Italy from our group. I actually predicted anybody from our group, Nigeria, Italy, Brazil, one of these three teams will get to the final, and eventually it came to pass. But Uruguay beating Italy uh, in that final over the weekend, Isaac. You know, apart from the fact that it was just a long go, that particular final was one-sided. I saw an Uruguayan team that made Italy look so ordinary. 
I mean, even the game that Italy played against Nigeria and Nigeria won, the Italians were not that ordinary. But against Uruguay, I saw players who are very disciplined, skillful, technically gifted, and made the Italians look so, so, so ordinary. So I wasn't surprised that Uruguay eventually got uh, the long goal and it was a victory they deserved. And look at the journey of Uruguay. This is the first time they are winning it as a country. And for Italians, they also wanted to do it, but they couldn't. But the difference was very clear yesterday, Emmanuel. I saw two sides and I was asking, how did Italy go to the final? Not because Italy were not good, but because they were made to look ordinary. They were not good. <laughs> I'm telling you, the, just give it to the Rugmans. Some of those some of the players are players to watch for the nearest future. And if not for the goalkeeper of the Italian team, it will be more than that. More, more goals. And this was the same Uruguayan team that lost to England at the group stage. You know, you, uh, England was almost superb. But they lost to England. Italy lost to Nigeria. Both of them played in the final Uruguay and Italy. And they got victory. But the most important one and interesting one to me was for Israel. This is their first time of participating in this tournament. And they defeated South Korea 3-1 to win the bronze medal. This is, you know, Israeli side, I mean country, on the 20 team, came in as underdogs. But they will became the country beaters except when they got to the second final. And they did it again against uh, South Korea. Mr. South Korea also looked as if they were not the side that played very well against Nigeria. So kudos to Israel, kudos to Uruguay, and kudos to Italy for I mean, getting to the finals, first, second, and third. Yes, kudos to all of them, all the four semi-finalists. We actually wanted Nigeria to get there, but we couldn't after we lost to Korea in that particular encounter in the quarterfinal. Congratulations to Uruguay for winning the trophy. They made sure it stayed in that region, and now they, uh, they will be smiling home with a lot of dollars in their pocket, and then every other team that actually participated. And for Nigeria, we actually gave our best. Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Yes, I think one, one issue I'm very worried about, about the organization of that tournament, was the pitch of play. Yeah. Virtually all the pitches used at this particular tournament didn't show anything good. And if we are to continue like that, we will not get the best. And for a country like Argentina, that you'll have thought that they will have gotten the best and the best facilities, they presented the worst pitches for the authority team. And that is not the best for a uh, tournament organized by FIFA. That's not the best, but I can make excuse for Argentina because they were not the outright host. It was Indonesia. They were stripped of that hosting right because they never wanted Israel. They actually won the bronze. I think Israel now in Nigerian Palace, we tell them in tour, we have won <laughs> the bronze medal. So we can make excuse for them because it was just a fire brigade approach. They, they had to just put up something for them to actually um, host the tournament. But outside that, they should have uh, presented good pitches. But let's leave uh, the World Cup and head straight and come back to Europe. And right now, it's tennis, tennis, tennis in the French Open, where Nova Djokovic has actually won the 23rd Men Grand Slam title by beating, uh, by beating uh, Norwegian uh, Kaspar Ruud in the French Open final. Djokovic was far from his best in the initial stage, but his quality in the first set tie break laid the platform for a 7-6, 7-1, 6-3, 5 victory over the Norwegian, and the serve moves into the outright lead of men majors ahead of Rafael Nadal on 22, and right now he's on 23. Isaac... Nova Djokovic, I have always said this man is obsessed with titles. And I told somebody he has the same trait with Cristiano Ronaldo. They always want to win. They always want to be at the top of their game. Djokovic, 23rd Grand Slam title for this man from Serbia. Yes, a final that attracted football stars and even other stars. Tom Bradley was also there. Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Mpape, as well as Olivier Giroud, were all there. That's to show you the quality of game that uh, final, you know, processes. And to look at Djokovic, you know, I don't want to talk much about him because for you to have risen in between the likes of Roger Fedra, Rafael Nadal, and Rafael Nadal, those are special you are. Because these two have made me, these two are like the signpost of tennis. But here is a man from Serbia, 
just as you said, so committed and dedicated and always wanting to win like Ronaldo, who came in and has neutralized or not make, you know, how would I put it? Not that he has cancelled the records by these two uh, men I've mentioned before, but Djokovic has come in and carved a niche for himself. So he is one of the greatest. I almost imagine the greatest yeah. in tennis. And he has won virtually all the Grand Slams, at least three times. Yes, of course. So why won't you give it to this man? One of the greatest. And I saw uh, the tweet by Roger Federer, and Rafael Nadal congratulating him, and telling him, you can still do more. And definitely, I know, uh, that young old man, Djokovic, will do more. <laughs> he will do more. Talking about him doing more. Victory on the Paris Clay move Djokovic alongside Serena and Williams on the terms of Grand Slam titles with 23, with only Margaret Court standing in front of them with 24. And Serena Williams also chased that record. To, add to, to She wanted to make it 24 Grand Slam title, but she never got that title. And now Djokovic has joined them on 23 Grand Slam titles. Now, is he, will he be able to match Margaret Scott's uh, um, achievement history where that lady has 24 Grand Slam titles to her name? But uh, Serena Williams chased that record. She could not get it. And now Djokovic is also chasing that record. Let's see what happened in the US Open and then the Wimbledon, that, um, in the Wimbledon uh, tight, uh, championship that will be coming up pretty soon by next month and then uh, the US Open in August. A lot, a lot is standing in Djokovic way. Let's see if he can actually equal that record. And for the women, uh, for the women's uh, French Open uh, tournament, Igor Swatek, world number one, also a top seed, also beating uh, uh, Karina Mutova uh, to actually win her fourth Grand Slam, uh, her fourth uh, French Open title right there in France, in Paris. And congratulations to Djokovic and Igor Swatek for emerging uh, victors and winners of the French Open 2023 for men and women. Let's move away from that story and head straight uh, and quickly tell you a uh, transfer story right now where representative of Saudi Arabian club side al Hila are in Paris to secure the signing of PSG uh, Neymar. Neymar to the Middle East, Isaac Omidiji. You know, Saudi Arabia is becoming the country for these big boys to go and rest and make more money. Uh, Ronaldo made the, uh, you know, took the step. Karim Bezema has followed suit. Ngolo Kante is there. And now Neymar probably might be making the move. Remember, Wilfred Zaha has also been offered deals. Even the same David De Gea we're talking about has been offered deals in Saudi Arabia. So let's see how it's going to pan out. You cannot rule out anything. Going to Saudi Arabia will not take anything away from Lema. He's still a good player that has, and that I think his potential, uh, we didn't see enough of his potential, if you ask me. But he has that is the most important thing. And he's very confident <laughs> in his country, Brazil. So, and the money is there, bigger than even what PSG will offer. So let's see what will happen. It's not getting younger. We don't, it's no longer the young Neymar we know him to be. So if Karim Benzema with the record and the goals he scored last season can make a switch to the Saudi Arabia League, I would not be surprised if Neymar does because Messi has left PSG. Mbappe is still remaining. Uh, you know, he's a young lad. If he's going to make a move, I think he's going to go to Real Madrid and not to the Saudi, Saudi League for now. <laughs> and I think the Saudi League, no matter how they want to make it look like, would not be popular. As some of this league, but you know, bringing some of these stars, we also bring in revenue for them. We bring in endorsement. We bring in TV attention, TV sponsorship. And don't forget that it's not just footballers are looking at; they're even looking at the famous and popular good commentator. You know, in Peter Jory, they want him to come and sign a deal to run commentary in Saudi Arabia. Hmm. So, if the likes of Peter Jory will be going to Saudi Arabia to also run commentary, that is a big deal. It's a big deal, actually a big deal. Now all the, all the stars in Europe are actually uh, moving their train uh, to the Middle East. But uh, if you look at, uh, let's talk about the developmental uh, uh, style of uh, the, the Southeast as in the Middle East. How far can they go with this, uh, with this, uh, with this process, with this plan, with this uh, getting players from uh, European uh, clubs? Well, they have the money, but they must use it well. 
Now, it's not about getting the stars alone. What, what, are, what are they doing to develop their own stars at all? Because some of the stars they are getting are years free. And they will hang their boots. So what happened after that? Will they continue to recruit stars and stars and stars and stars without also trying to develop their own players to become stars? They must make their own players become stars because you cannot have stars, 11 star players from Europe making up all the teams. So they must be able to attract players from that place, develop players from their own region, and from their own country, and make it a compact league and not a league that offers just money. Because it stands now, the only thing Saudi Arabia League offers is money, not the beauty of the game. No, not the excitement, no, but money. So they must go beyond money and offer good football. They must look be football. okay. They must look beyond money and offer good football. I don't know what's happened to our own Nigerian players. <laughs> no team is actually here for now, but I believe Nigerian players will also move. We have a lot of them, uh, uh, the likes of Samuel Osai and the rest of them. Even Onuachu is being uh, touted in Italy. Let's see if we actually go. Okay, before we go quickly, let's uh, give you this last uh, transfer story where Newcastle United is actually leading the race to capture James Madison of Le uh, Leicester City. They will be playing in the championship, uh, but for this young man, Newcastle in the, is in the front race to actually land him ahead of Tottenham. Should he go to Newcastle or Tottenham? Newcastle definitely will be playing Champions League football next season, Isaac. If you look at the project going on at Newcastle, we kept them joining Newcastle. I don't know whether you're a two man already joined Aston Villa and I was playing also in Europe. So James Madison was also up his game. It's one of those players that didn't do enough Leicester last season. Well, last season was not good enough, but we know he's a yeah. <laughs> pretty good player. So it would be a good addition to uh, Mass I mean to Newcastle. I remember that Eddie Ha has been a good manager, he knows how to manage such players, and his, his coming to Newcastle would be a great one than uh, going to Tottenham. Initially it was Tottenham, but that was when Tottenham was still doing very well. Uh, Tottenham needed a lot of rejuvenation, they need a lot of surgical operation. To begin uh, the status, and let's hope that the signing of Ang Ostokolu uh, from Celtic will help solve their problem. But for Jim Madison, if I were him, I would choose Newcastle over Tottenham. All right, if you were Madison, you would choose Newcastle over Tottenham. Thank you, Isaac, for your insightful analysis on the show this evening. Uh, thank you very much, Isaac. Thank you for your time, my lord. All right. I am Emmanuel Fashemin. Thanks for watching.